if I can give you, you know, one thing on your way to see every hand as a puzzle, see the deep beauty of poker with payouts and all the crazy stuff that's possible. Welcome to our today's session. This one is looking back at my final table of the 100K No Limit Holder main event. I'm on the left, I have exactly 10 big blinds and I have aces in the big blind against Smiller who opens cutoff. I think Smiller opens probably a pip too wide or wider than he should with like Talal on the button. But particularly what I thought is that he would open one pip too wide and I thought that he would never call looser than he's supposed to. Which made me think that I thought the EV of aces is higher calling than showing. I guess it also depends a lot on how much pressure I am under, but that was my assumption in the situation. The output was to shove everything. This was a very interesting spot. I still believe that the EV might be higher for a call. It probably depends on how wide he opens, how wide he calls off, how big the ICM pressure is, and so on and so on. I think when we give it, uh, let's say like a 3.5 or 3.8 or four big blind three bet, I think that the EV runs really close between all options probably. And uh, with my particular assumptions, let's say it like this, I would think that call is a tad better. Flop is 835, I check the C bets, and I think with this particular hand without spade, I just want to raise basically all the time. He bets 300k, I think here just raising to something where he continues basically any two overs is nice. I mean, I can also call, like, I don't think it's absurd, but I felt like in this particular spot, it's just better to make a two street game out of it rather than potentially playing three streets on this type of structure of board. I decide to raise to 750, where I think I will get a lot of continues with a really nice SPR in turn. And then on turn, actually, think that it's very nice to check again like i have really high equity he oftentimes has like two overs and i think he's going to bet this type of hand really often to try to win the pot here if i jam i basically only get calls by hands that also bet themselves basically a hand like king nine he probably is not supposed to bet here he just simplifies his game he just thinks i have give ups or strong hands and that's kind of a simple way for him to risk quite little for the size of the pot to play a straightforward game out of the same so I, I totally understand the bet, but I think in theory it's probably not going to happen that often. I found it interesting post-flop, much trickier than just shopping all in, that's for sure. Ace deuce suited now for Soiza. You know, he's actually thinking about 3 betting this hand right now. Yeah, nailed it. Nasty. You're raising a lot. Expected to fold. This was a good one, particularly because I just want to show like how granular you can get, also what exploits you can find. I actually didn't dive super deep into this one, but I think this is particularly the type of hands you want to be taking as bluffs here. I think it's another example of most players don't find it. If you play final tables, look for these type of spots, especially against opponents, much more against opponents that you think find the folds. My assumption was that he four bet jams much less than he's supposed to. This is a hand he's supposed to four bet jam basically always, and he doesn't which proves my assumption to a certain point, unless he 4-bet jams other hands, which I think is very, very unlikely. This is my jamming slash 3-betting range. This is now 6 big blinds instead of 5.75 or something. Ace 3 off, Ace 6 off, really high frequency, and then it's like Queens plus, Ace King suited. Type of hand, definitely the right hand class, but I would have probably taken this hand. Full frequency with like very high frequency, Ace 6 through Ace 3, basically pure. So just showing like how I make an adjustment there where I think the 3-bet as a bluff just uh, is very, very profitable. And on the right side, his response where the calling range that might look a little different with a more accurate post flop sim, but the rejamming, king exuded and ace exuded, especially the lower ones, blockers and decent equity when called, or at least okay equity when called. Think about it like this, when I have a value range that's really condensed, right? I have like aces, ace king, kings, and queens. And then my bluffs are only ace x basically, right? Like I have some king nine or whatever, but it's like basically only ace x. Now, if you have a king in your hand, you block some of my value, right? So you block ace king and you block pocket kings, which is pretty relevant. And you unblock aces and ace x, but the ace x is much more bluffs. So you unblock bluffs and you block value. You actually jam quite a bit of king exuded because you do okay. I mean, not great when called, definitely not, but it's really more of a blocker idea. And as you can see, the suited aces, especially the low ones are pure re-jams. That's just one thing that I found an interesting hand here because it's an exploit that I applied, which is to a degree also theory, and I think worked out pretty well because at least my assumption was partly proven. Unless he regems a lot, a lot King X suited, I think my play is doing pretty well.
We have five left, 100K, 200K blinds. We are basically last in chips together with Adrian. We play 16 bigs effective. I'm in a small run against Michael. I want to play not too loose here because there's another short stack, but I also don't want to play too passive because I'm not that much under pressure. I want to be open folding quite a bit, right? Like if we compare it to Chip EV, I'm going to tighten my range. Once you kind of understand, okay, you don't want to BP IP too much, so you want to fold your bottom range. But the more tricky part, I think, is what to shove and what to raise. I thought in game, these type of hands like King 3, King 4, King 5, King 6 off, I would very specifically put in my raise folding range. So I would say that I probably raise a little wider for value. Ace 10 suited, Ace Queen suited, Ace King off. Those hands that play very well post flop, I would definitely raise wider for value. Even a hand like King Queen suited, I might raise a bit more. King Jack suited, I might raise pure. Ace Jack suited, I might limp a bit less. So those are definitely hands that I will raise a bit more and I will also raise a bit wider Let's call it as bluffs because I think that Michael will attack me slightly less than he should and I think he will shove slightly less than he should. I think that he plays a bit more passive than that in this particular spot and so I decided to raise this particular hand. What is the bottom raise call? Yeah, I would think that here at King Jack, King 10 suited are the bottom raise calls. King 10 off, you have to raise fold if you raise it and Queen Jack off also raise folding. Limping I think is somewhat natural, right? Like you just limp and trap some stronger stuff, you limp some off the bottom Raising is more complicated. So I think raise versus jam is, is actually not that easy to play well here. So definitely worth checking something like that out. In the big blind to find all those offsuit aces rejams and that you're not rejamming as like five, sixes and sevens against the range I'm raising. Like stuff like that is actually also not super intuitive. Also that you're rejamming like king low offsuit is maybe not so intuitive, but all that depends on how my range looks like. And the pool likes to jam more ace x and less of the other stuff. So that's why raising also generally becomes better is like it doesn't happen that I raise king six and he jams king three. I don't think that's a situation that ever happens here. 10-7 suited, it's out. Controlled. Gear shift from Talal? Maybe a bit of a gear shift. We have a hand here. Queen for off in a small blind against Michael. I have 27 bigs, Adrian is short, and Michael is short. And Michael is second in chips, so I can put quite a bit of pressure on him. And now here we had this king six off spot before. Queen four off is like between call and full, right? So if we start out with this, it's now it's kind of a little move to the top, but here he covered me. I was a bit under pressure, I have to be a bit less. Now it's the other way around. I cover him, he's kind of in a similar spot that I was there. Now it's kind of the other way around. I cover him by a bit more and he's a bit in a spot where Adrian is shorter one and so on. So now I want to be putting on pressure and kind of the most natural thing to put pressure on is like putting in chips, right? So raising and jamming. And I felt that queen for off is a pretty good hand class. Generally, these type of high cut, low cut, you reduce the SPI, your top pair functions somewhat as a blocker, but also okay and like these top pair as a second pair setups. So that's also a concept that helped me a lot that I thought more of in like eight years ago that I actually talked a lot about with Stefan. And this was pre-solver. This was just like our brains, basically. The idea was you take a hand and you polarize these spots a bit more with these rather bad high cut, low cut hands. So like king four, king five, queen four, queen five, queen six, stuff off suit. If you reduce the SPR, first of all, you have an immediate street pre-flop where you put your opponent in a tough spot, right? Like you polarize a little bit. He has to be careful like defending because he commits quite a lot of chips, especially under ICM. And you have a clear race fold, obviously, if he jams. And it actually plays decent post-flop because you actually have quite some top pair, second pair setups. You obviously don't flop super great equity, but you have some decent bet falls because you either hit or miss type of idea. When you make a top pair with this low SPR, you actually get in spots where you have top pair and here's second pair or you have top pair and here's third pair. You obviously also have some top pair, top pair setups where you have top pair and here's some better top pair. This is not as painful compared in like the big relation compared to like the value also you get from like having some setups in your favor of like top pair versus second pair. Now it's cool to then see things that you thought of in like 2013, 14 to then see that in the solver to some degree. Maybe actually I should have two sizings here probably gonna respond roughly like this with again a little bit less shoving i think offsuit aces you will find maybe a bit more shoving of suited aces but probably a bit less of those that are all over the place that you can see there like probably a bit less offsuit kings a bit less suited hands that he's showing playing the spot aggressive and really understanding that there's both a raising range that's somewhat polarized but also a really wide jamming range with almost no limping as you can see right like it's 10 percent limp is basically the name of the game here 
I open raise, button three bets. I four bet shove. He snap calls. Uh, there we go. Rest in peace. <laughs> I wasn't super sad. It's just really, I would have loved to continue playing. This was so much fun. Thanks so much for attending, for the support. And as always, keep crushing. I will see you guys in the community.